Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with our Blooming Catholic Life. I'm in here, I'm in the rabbit pens today to talk to you about the current rabbit pandemic. And you're like, what? Yeah, the whole time there's been a human pandemic, there's been a rabbit pandemic as well. It's a different virus though. This is RHDV2, rabbit hemorrhagic viral disease. And that's exactly how it sounds. Figures estimate that at least 80% of rabbits are going to get infected with this. And of those 80% that get infected, 90% of them will die. And I don't just mean die. I mean, like, it's called rabbit viral hemorrhagic disease. Um, most of them would, the first symptom is blood shooting out of all their orifices as they have seizures and die. Yay! Uh, so... So if you see that, first of all, call a veterinarian. Don't go near the rabbit. Don't touch them. If you must put on all kinds of protective gear, you probably have things around now. You probably have masks, some kind of coveralls you might have, um, or wear really old clothes and gloves. Um, I, I wouldn't touch them. And you know, the wild rabbits are getting it too. That's one of the huge concerns. Um, so if you see wild rabbits that look sick or have blood around their nose or their eyes or their backside, um, please don't touch them. I know we're getting close to spring and people are going to, going to want to do rabbit rescues like they always do and they're always out there rescuing baby rabbits who usually don't need your help. There's nothing we can do for these rabbits now, friends. So unfortunately, if you see rabbits like this and you see the blood in the, you know, near their orifices, you need to call the state wildlife agency ASAP because they may need to quarantine your area, alert all rabbit owners, farmers. Um, it does only affect rabbits. That's, that's great, but it is affecting our wild and domestic populations. So in the beginning of this epidemic, all we could do was biosecurity measures. And I don't mean like people were doing for COVID. I mean, like the hardcore people were saying, you're, we're talking gloves, complete changes of clothes. So you got to wash your hands before and after you touch the rabbits. But before and after you get in with them, you're going to completely change your clothes as well as your outdoor clothes can't be coming indoors. This virus is so insane, RHDV2. Um, extreme temperatures don't kill it. And most of the disinfectants don't kill it. You have to make like a 10% bleach solution, but it has to be made and immediately used. You can't like use one and then store it in a glass bottle somewhere and then use it next week. No, we're talking immediate use. Um, it's that crazy. Also, if you have other pets, like I have a dog, right? I have Rusty. If Rusty used to go outside and then come inside, um, we were training him for a while to wash his feet when he came in. <laughs> that didn't really go so well. Um, and, but we were trying to be super careful. Now it hadn't hit our state yet. So we were just practicing being careful, practicing changing our shoes at the door, that sort of thing. It's really hard to do. It's harder than you realize, especially if you have multiple exits. Like the rabbits back here are near a sliding glass door. And that's where I go out to do my composting and stuff and where Rusty goes out at night. Um, when we were in the height of RHDV2, I couldn't let him out that door because he'd be infecting them possibly as soon as he came in the door. Um, are my rabbits, if they pop out here, I don't know if you can see them, might be able to see little ears right here. They're considering coming out. There's treats all over the floor here. Um, they have all been vaccinated. They've all received two doses of the vaccine. It's a brand new vaccine. The old vaccine was pretty new, but they had to kill rabbits in order to make it. Yikes, right? So it was only available if rabbits were uh, dying in your state, then you could get the vaccine. It had all these government regulations um, and it was very iffy. But thankfully, um, Medgene, an American company, made a new vaccine that they don't have to kill rabbits for. The problem is it's brand new and we're using it under emergency use. So although these guys have gotten two doses already, we don't know how long it's going to last. So do we still do full biosecurity measures? Maybe not. But some of them are pretty good practices. You know, people in a lot of Asian countries take their shoes off the second they come in the door. That's not the worst thing. I've looked at having, they have these cute little bags by the door where you would have slippers that your guests could pick up. Now in my family, everybody has like orthotics for in their shoes because they have a lot of flat feet or high arches or different things. So it wouldn't work for people like that, but you could encourage them to bring like their own pair of Crocs or something with them that they wear with their orthotics that they would switch over when they came in your house. 
It's also important to be very clear with pet sitters. Now, our pet sitters happened to also have a rabbit and that rabbit also got vaccinated. She actually went with us to all our vaccination clinics. So I feel a little bit better about that. And I know that they're totally willing to do biosecurity measures should RHDV2 come to our state. Now, if you're in an area that you haven't been able to get the vaccine or you haven't been able to afford it yet, oh, take a deep breath because it's not just those biosecurity measures. You have to be careful where their food comes from. And their main source of food, if you can see it back there, hay. If you see, uh, it's back here. <laughs> hey, they eat Timothy hay. Tons of it. It's everywhere in our house. It's everywhere in our clothes. Timothy hay is their main thing. And most of hay is coming from the Midwest, so that's been okay. But a lot of greens come from the West and Southwest, which is weird because we're on the East Coast. So we had to be really careful when we went to the grocery store and not get any produce like from Mexico or the Southwest. Sorry, Penny's a little angry at me. Girl rabbits are such queens and divas. I think you can see her there now. Um, so we've had to be very careful. A lot of our greens we've been getting from North Carolina are super local to us. We, you know, we, I love our local on-farm market. So we've been getting as much as we could there or growing it ourselves. Again, though, we had to constantly check to see where the virus was. And it is in New York State now. It's, it's hit the East Coast. That's really scary. Um, so again, things we can do. Get the vaccine. It's from MedGene. Um, our vet didn't carry it. We couldn't find a local vet that did, but a vet that's ah, more in our region had a clinic. Yay. So you have to network with other bunny owners. So you find out when these clinics are happening. And it was literally, you you walked in one door of the place, right? You filled out your paperwork, walked in, got your shots, went out the other door. It was a total clinic like that. And of course, our rabbits now have a vaccination card. Right, guys? Yeah, I know. They're not happy with me. Um, but they do have vaccination cards. And I know some states and countries are taking it to the extreme. This is a very serious disease in most places. Most places don't want it. I'll get back to that in a second. So if you have a pet rabbit, there are states now regulating not only that your rabbits have to be vaccinated, but they have to get a microchip. Does that sound familiar? So that they can prove that that vaccination rabbit goes, sorry, that vaccination record goes with that rabbit. And you have to have all your documentation if you're even allowed to bring an animal into that state or have a rabbit in that state. Now, some countries are studying it because they aren't really opposed to it. That country would be Australia. Australia doesn't have any native rabbits. They've got plenty of rabbits. They've got a huge rabbit problem, um, but they're not native. And so they're using it to control the rabbits, which sounds great for them, but that's not great for the rest of us because that means... That virus is still out there unchecked. They're not going to do anything to stop it, probably. They're probably going to study it, but not do anything to stop it. And that's bad because there's travelers coming in and out of Australia. And I don't think Australia is making them do biosecurity measures at the airport where they suddenly change all their clothes and shoes, right? So it could still travel to other countries. So if you have friends coming in and out of Australia, just ask them to be super careful and wash all their clothes and everything as fast as they can. Maybe quarantine. Three months seems to be it. This virus can live without a host for three months. Insane, I know. <laughs> can you say to your neighbors, when you get home from Australia, put all your clothes and luggage in a giant Ziploc bag in your garage for three months. Could you do that for me? I don't know what else to do unless they're going to bleach all their clothes. <laughs> so I don't have any solutions for you on that, but... That's the short <laughs> the looks I'm getting. You guys can't see the looks. <laughs> These rabbits are not amused with me being in here filming. <laughs> I really thought one of them would come out eventually. Look at all these treats. Aren't you going to come out and get the treats? Well, they're looking. Are you seeing them move? Oh, my goodness. They're going to be mad if I move this little play table. Maybe if I move the play table with all their great toys. Um, all their toys are wooden, of course, because rabbits' teeth continually grow throughout their life, and so they have to have lots of great toys to chew on. Leroy! Penny! Can you see him at all? I think you can see Penny. Leroy's brown. He's over here. This is his sister Penny. They're all New Zealand mixes. So, while the 
Penny and Pepper, who's over there you can't see, are both white with the pink eyes. A lot of people won't adopt those. Um, Lemur is actually brown with brown eyes and just a little bit smaller, but they're actually all litter mates. Um, they're not the super friendliest. They came to us from a hoarding case. It's very unfortunate. People think, oh, I'm going to help these animals, but they end up thinking they're the only ones that can help the animals, and they end up with a lot of them. Oftentimes, they don't spay and neuter them, and we end up with tons of rabbits that eventually aren't being cared for very well because there's just too many, and so the rescuer can't take care of all of them. And the state comes in, rescues them, and calls on groups like the House Rabbit Society to come and get them, who get them all medical checkups and everything they need, spayed and neutered, and get them out and adopted. What does that mean in the time of RHDV2? That scares me, friends. If people are getting out there and doing it themselves, are they going to get all their rabbits vaccinated? Yikes, because if there was a large colony of house rabbits and RHDV2 got in it, I don't even want to think about it. Leroy doesn't either. That's horrible, friends. So get out there. Um, the House Rabbit Society has the most resources of anybody I know. Um, you can find them online. They're going to tell you where the outbreak is anytime it gets into a new state and it's confirmed. They're going to let you know. They're going to let you know anything that's new in the science. They're so great about it. And they're just good information all around for house rabbits and best practices. Here's Penny. <laughs> so friends, um, yeah, so those are the things we have to be careful of. Be aware of where RHDV2 is in your area. Adopt some common sense biosecurity measures like changing your shoes at your door, washing your hands before and after you touch any animals. If you see a sick and injured animal, don't pick it up yourself, especially if it has blood around any of its orifices. Um, call your state wildlife agency right away. I think that's everything. God bless you, friends. I know we're all doing the best we can in these scary times. So reach out there, network with each other, and let's do the best we can. God bless you, friend.